is Indian Force Prime Time News Package for today. I am your presenter, Alien Christopher. In today's headlines, Dominica's Fire and Ambulance Service reports a higher ambulance call compared to 2017. Leader of the Opposition Party hoping for a new beginning following a government-organized consultation. And an influential U.S. evangelist dies at age 99. Stay tuned for these and other stories after his break. If you're HIV positive or have an STI, having unprotected sex with multiple partners puts them in grave danger. You'll expose every partner and their present and future partners to HIV or another STI. Use a condom every time you have sex. You can live a productive life even if diagnosed with HIV. Remember, early detection is key to your survival. Be responsible, protect yourself and others. Help stop the spread of HIV and other STIs. Attention si vous êtes homme et bien femme. Visitez la santé pour examiner le corps. Ça c'est un nick pour vous voir si la ni pièce moun au limon qui ni maladie TB et bien maladie sexuelle. En compagnie moun qui ni maladie HIV peut ni TB aussi. Sauf qui la ni guérison pour TB. Ou sa vive en bonne santé même si ou ni maladie HIV. Parlez by docteur ou. Pour responsabilité ou. Aidez du bout de simé maladie TB et HIV. Ou agez tout le monde pour examiner le corps. Dominica's current CARICOM male youth ambassador and member of the National Youth Council Executive, Eudley Peer, has stated that the second edition of the ECCB Stakeholders Growth Dialogue, which was held in St. Kitts, was a very exciting and pertinent meeting. The Growth Dialogue, which brings both governmental and non-governmental representatives across the currency union to find consensus on priorities and strategies for economic growth in the Eastern Korean Currency Union. We know that the Eastern Caribbean currency is only used by members of the OECS or the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States. So basically, it's trying to make a stronger Eastern dollar with the input of all different social partners. So I had the opportunity to represent the youth, but there were also different stakeholders at the meeting, including corporate partners, trade unionists, and also the opposition and also environment, environment and engineer leaders. Commenting on his participation in the event, Pierre said that the youth needs more training and educational opportunities. That the, the, the union should do and what they think that different stakeholders should do. Um, as a youth representative, it was very humbling for me first of all to represent the youth and, and to make an intervention that, that we need training, that the youth need opportunity, the youth needs example investments in small business so that we could we could sort of buffer between uh, the government or the or the central government and have a free flowing how is it private sector because we know that without the small and micro businesses definitely the economy will not will not boom the single market and so on will not boom so henceforth we've been advocating for more training also for more education opportunities because in this time we need more skilled and trained persons. The event which was a follow-up of the inaugural dialogue organized in 2017 was held under the theme working together to raise growth levels and resilience in the OECS. <laughs> Parliamentary representative for the Mao constituency Honorable Raymond Blackmore announced that works are set to continue on the Massac basketball hard court. 
The minister laments that Hurricane Maria has slowed down the process. However, he is not at all discouraged since efforts are being made to clear the grounds at all to allow sorry, construction works. Blackmore further stated that the government has already made a down payment on the steel frame structure. He says that works will commence shortly after receiving the structure. Marissa Stedman visited the sporting venue and has more to tell us. Sporting venues in Dominica that may appear such as this one, devastated after the passage of Hurricane Maria. But in a recent meeting held by the parliamentary representative of the Maho constituency, Mr. Raven Blackmore, he indicated that the basketball court here, located in the community of Massac, will be the first venue that will be completely covered. So yes, now completely sheltered away from the abundance of rain and sunshine. One may wonder why Massac but I can tell you that before the passage of Hurricane Maria, it is a known fact that the basketball court located in Massac was booming with activity. And basketball is a sport that is heavily promoted in the community of Massac. Now the venue, you can see that there are huge poles, huge dom leg poles. The minister also indicated that he has asked the company responsible for this to remove it because in the coming weeks, months, we have no indication exactly what time, but he did indicate that soon, pretty soon, this place will be completely covered. Marissa Stedman reporting from the basketball court located in Massac, CBN for News. Minister of Dominica, the Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, has stated that he has spoken to Domlek and indicated clearly that based on information and knowledge and what he has seen on the grounds, the company will not be able to achieve their target if they do not increase resources on the grounds. Domlek has recently set aside April 2018 as its deadline to power up the entire country. The Prime Minister noted that Domlek has indicated to him that they recognize that they are behind on the set April 2018 target. My pro our projection it will take up until the 3rd of November, based on the results they have currently. But they have assured me that they are increasing the buckets and the trucks and the linesmen. We have been ably assisted by the uh, revolutionary government of Cuba and the Cuban people who have had a number of linesmen here on the ground. They will also leave at the end of March. Dominic has requested the government that we request the Cuban authorities to extend that state. We have requested that of the Cuban authorities and they have agreed to extend it up until the end of April to assist with additional linesmen on the ground to call the country. And two of the most popular hotspots in the community of Wharton Waven says that they have not been able to generate any income after damages sustained as a result of the hurricane. The owners of both entities admit that they are unable to cater to visitors during the limited cruise season. According to them, finance is the most needed resource to make the necessary repairs and improvements. Marissa Stedman tells us more. One of the most popular hotspots in the community of Wharton Waven, if not the most popular, screws, best known for its hot water baths. And I have here beside me the manager of Screw Spa. Tell us, sir, how have you been affected by Hurricane Maria? Yeah, um, well, financially, this was uh, my bread and butter, you know. And uh, besides my bread and butter, this is the home of wellness, you know, for uh, the DA people and the people around uh, the Caribbean and the world. I have to say, then people accept that fully. Now, let me tell you, there was limited cruise season. I'm, supposedly, we're still in the limited cruise season. Have mm -hmm. you done anything during that time? Uh, well, I have to say no, because um, my damage was uh, very great. And I, I don't want to say um, negative things about the government because, you know, everything is on their back now. So, but i hoping that they will come on board with us. But and in that season, maybe it was too tight for them to come on board to help us. But I think uh, something is in the pipeline, so I hope for positive things to work. How optimistic are you that um, for this year's tourist season, starting in April, 
October, my apologies, to April, that you will be able to start accommodating tourist arrivals? Uh, well, well, as we speak, you know, the government has something, you know, uh, in the pipeline and i um, going to uh, aid me with uh, um, heavy equipment to, um, to start something rolling. So maybe two, three months down the line, we can come back much stronger, uh, much where we went wrong. Well, not well, 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 went wrong, but where we didn't uh, do as much thing, we can, we're going to come back stronger and better and uh, serve the public um, as better in every way we can, you know. Now, so I do want to ask, you know, there's all these talks about building back better, building resilient, ensuring that every aspect of our economy is built resilient. Yeah. How do you intend to build resilient? Well, first of all, um, uh, we have a, a blessing uh, and, um, and a curse in, this, in, in disguise, that's the water. In, 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 in one way, you know, when t things like that, the hurricane and thing, the water come down and really do a lot of things. But so we're not going to build in the river. We're going to build by the river and lots of other things that uh, we didn't take on, on board and, and like a category five hurricane to come and, and shake us up, you know. So I hope it shake us up and uh, in the right way to put things in place, you know. So if there is another thing like that, that we wouldn't be uh, to, sh our feathers can be still on us, I have to say, but, you know. So we're going to learn from that and hopefully come back stronger. Are you expecting the same turnover when you do make your renovation and repairs? Of course, of course, because it's not that, that um, the people or screw did fail. It's just that um, nature takes its place and, and then we was in the way. But of course, um, the people of Dominica cannot wait to uh, see that thing back on stream because they are aware of the goodness of the water, not just coming for a warm bath, but for the healing properties that are, that is in the water. So they, they cannot wait. Oh, I think I have to say, well, and on a positive note, they cannot wait to see that place open again for them to come. And even the people far field, you know, to come and enjoy that, they always ask about screw in the Discovery Dominica and things. So, um, Let's hope that, you know, positive things going to work and that train going to be too, too thin again, you know, on the track, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Thank you for speaking to CBN4. That's all for now. We uh, hope uh, everything going to work safe, you know, and peace and love come again. No matter even if this place is like that, it's a new rebirth. Come and be a part of it, you know. <laughs> Another very popular hotspot in the community of Wharton Waven is Tears. Tears is best known again for hot water baths, just like screws, and they too have been adversely affected by the passage of Hurricane Maria. I have the manager here beside me. He's not willing to speak on camera, but he is willing to indicate to us just how much damage that they have experienced here at Tears. After the passage of Hurricane Maria, tell me, were you affected and just how much? Uh, yeah, man, I was affected very much, badly too, damaged, bad, bad, bad. But um, we're trying to bring it back up because that's what we're dealing with. That's what we have. That's what we have to fix. Now today you're closed. Have you been closed since the passage of Hurricane Maria? Yeah, since, since we're trying to um, to put it back together. It's rough. It's really rough to really put it back together. But since after Maria, we're closed. So you haven't done anything for the limited cruise season? No. Well, I'm working on a project, not, but not for the cruise season yet. For, let's say, the, the visitors to come and come to tears, you know, I haven't reached that position as yet. Now, let me tell you, what sort of assistance do you require to get right back up and running? What you don't know is finance and manpower, really, to, 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 to really get things to go. You need to take some finance, you know. Are you optimistic that you will be able to cater to tourist arrivals for the next tourist season, October 2018? Well, yeah, even, even, before, even before that, I believe, well, we might have one, two little happenings, maybe not like um, when it had in full swing, but we're trying to really have the people back together 
to come and enjoy the hot bath. We know the people always want to come to tears because of how close it is to the road with the wheelchair access and then the private pool and, and the, the nice drinks we have in and the accommodation is always nice. So I know the people always really looking out for that. So that's why we're trying to put it up before even the next cruise season. And you mentioned that your main challenge is finance. Is there any agencies, any institutions that have pledged a commitment to assist you in your repairs? Well, no, no, we haven't reached to that stage yet. I think um, I know. And we'll be right back with more news after this break. Lani Sin Tupatu, attention si vous êtes nom et bien fan. Visitez Place Santé pour examiner le corps. Ça c'est un nid pour vous voir si l'année pièce moun au Liban qui ni maladie TB et bien maladie sexuelle. En compagnie de monde qui ni maladie HIV, peni TB aussi. Sauf qui l'année guérison pour TB. Pour ça vivre en bonne santé même si ou ni maladie HIV. Parlez by docteur. Prenez responsabilité. Aidez du bout de ces maladies TB et HIV. Pour agir tout le monde pour examiner le corps. If you're HIV positive or have an STI, having unprotected sex with multiple partners puts them in grave danger. You'll expose every partner and their present and future partners to HIV or another STI. Use a condom every time you have sex. You can live a productive life even if diagnosed with HIV. Remember, early detection is key to your survival. Be responsible, protect yourself and others. Help stop the spread of HIV and other STIs. Welcome back. Huge rocks sprung a landslide which occurred on Sunday in an area better known as the Kinfield Cliff near the Lyndhurst Funeral Home is still visible in that area. This is the second major landslide that has occurred at the cliff since the passage of Hurricane Maria. Marissa Stedman visited the site and has more to tell us. On Sunday morning, CBN4 learned of reports of a landslide that had occurred, a huge fallen rock. And I can tell you this, in an earlier clip, just a few months ago, there was a landslide that occurred underneath the Canefield Cliff. But this rock that you see behind me is far more animous than the one that occurred just a few months ago. There's also another rock sitting at the top of the cliff. There were a team of men on site who were trying to remove the rock from its present location. Apparently, the rope that they were using snapped, and the rock is still sitting at the height of the cliff. The gentleman who is operating the caterpillar right now, he's using one of the heavy equipment used to drill through the rock so as to try to turn it into tinier bits and pieces so that it can be removed from the Caneful Highway. Located next to the landslide is Linear's Funeral Home, a business enterprise that's been operating well over 26 years in Dominica. And um, we are here to find out just how this landslide that has just occurred is affecting their business. Thank you for speaking to CBN4. Thank you very much, and we're happy that CBN4 was very much concerned about our own safety. Definitely. Um, as the manager, can you tell me, how has your business been affected? Uh, definitely, it has been affected to some extent, even from the perspective of the employees. Because you could imagine the fear that some employees are feeling. You have this fallen rock and we do not know when next and what next. Also, the southern entrance has been blocked completely. Uh, so when public clients would be using that entrance, they would now have to move to the other entrance closer to the um, West Indies oil to come in. So they only have one area to come in. So it's about the fear, the concern of the accessibility and the moreover the um, structural capability of the, the, the business place. You mentioned fear. I want to touch on that a little bit. Um, just a few months ago, there was a huge landslide that occurred underneath the Caneville Cliff. And 
it's a known fact. Whenever people pass there, there's a lot of anxiety. People are fearful of the cliff. Now, the Prime Minister mentioned that there may be talks of evacuating persons who live in vulnerable areas. Mm -hmm. Do you think that fear may just drive you all from relocating if you have to, or if you are advised to? Uh, fear is one, but you also have to think of uh, safety safety and fear and also the cost of relocation. So all of this has to be taken into consideration. It is important that um, one considers the safety of the human person more than material thing as Ma Maria has shown us. Uh, but for all of those things has to be taken into consideration. The cost, the fear factor, and of course serving the clients. But I do want to ask, do you feel safe here? I still feel safe uh, to some extent and um, again it's about the persons who know about rock structure and who are seen and can inform us and should inform us as to the extent of the impact it is going to have on us. It may futurely, but the impact it's going to have on us. Standing next to me is a gentleman who says that he used this road daily. That is the road where the landslide has occurred. Tell us a little bit about it, sir. Yeah, this road, to speak the truth, for the past two weeks, I've been passing there steady. And I've been working up there for nearly nine years already, building, you understand, for several people. Now, automatically, you know, it came to pass now, two weeks back, me and my workers keep walking now to pick up buses. So eventually, I happen to tell my workers now, I recognize this mountain will occur anytime. And so that it, it is done, yes, son. So Sunday, Sunday morning, I've been told that it, it came down. And then the Monday morning, when I came to work now, I happened to see this mountain coming over true. So therefore now, what I'm trying to say now, this road now is a, is a short, short, short course road where people can be able to pass to make it much easier and faster instead of going past all wrong. You yes, But unfortunately, you know, the point is now, what I was saying to myself now, why in the beginning, when they happen to recognize this mountain keep broken piece by piece, why they could not do something about it? So everybody they could be able to prevent it from coming down to avoid incidents, yes, son, which is very bad, yes, son. So my point is now, is now, right now, it is breakdown right now, and which is now very huge. And now, what is the, what is the, what is the, um, the next thing about it now, in tomorrow now, seeing that it's already coming down. So in other words now, it seems to me that you know, it's showing us some sign whereby you now something more bad can, be, can happen, yes, son. So technically now, what I'm trying to say now is now, I'm, hope, I'm hoping that one day, our Prime Minister now will be able to look into it and see what he can do about it to avoid incidents. Yes, I don't want to stop you, but having said that, the PM did mention that he's going to relocate yeah. those who live in vulnerable yeah, yeah, areas. Yeah, yeah. Do you consider Lower Mount Daniel a vulnerable area? Well, I do not live Mount Daniel, but I work in Mount Daniel. Yes, and what I'm looking at now, for, for the past years I've been working in Mount Daniel. There is, I can remember there was an a, 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 a exit. At, 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 at over the side, yes, son. Whereby now a main road, a real road can be able to pass there. You know, son? So, why they, they could not just cut the road above Mount Daniel from to Focoli to make it much easier for people to be able to pass to avoid incident for people not to get injured with this case that's happening there every time? So, I would say to my Prime Minister, in the future, look into it and then try to make a way to open this road on the, from Focoli to Mount Daniel so to make it much easier and affordable. And my final question to you, sir, do you think that more landslides are set to occur in well, this area? To speak the truth, with Mondale up there, there is no sign of landslide in Mondanel. But the only landslide it shows now is only that particular place here. You understand? But Mondanel is a very good place where it doesn't show no landslide, no way of landslide can occur. But it's only this piece of cliff there, right, that is the problem right now. And this is why they really must look into it. You understand? But Thank you. Very with up Mondanel, Mondanel is okay. And that is the main and best place they could be able to make a road so people could be able to pass much better and with no fear. Yes, sir. So I'm just hoping that they will look into it and get it done. Yes, sir. Thank you yeah. very much. And thank you for speaking to CBN4. Yeah, okay. so there you have it. The concerns of, of course, the general manager of the Linus Funeral Services and a gentleman who works on a daily basis in this area. We also learned that there's a gentleman, a homeless man, who lives in a cave where the landslide occurred and fortunately for him during the time of the incident he was not inside the cave when the landslide occurred 
after the passage of Hurricane Maria, our footage will show you there were huge logs all over the street. This road was completely inaccessible. We just learned from the manager of the funeral services that private sector businesses located in this lower Mount Daniel area came together and completely cleared the road just two weeks ago. And now look at this, a massive landslide completely blocking the south end of their property. There's no access from this direction. We were attempting to go further upwards to speak to residents of this community, but we will show you that there is still a lot of debris, a lot of huge fallen trees on the roadside, so we are unable to access this area. So for now, CBN4 continues to watch as the story unfolds. Marisa Stedman, CBN4 News. And the opposition leader, Lennox Linton, has stated that he hopes that the recent consultation organized by the government of Dominica will be a new beginning between the United Workers' Party and the ruling party. Linton, who addressed the consultation on Monday, noted that he has consistently called for unity since the passing of Hurricane Maria. I stand before you today as the leader of the parliamentary opposition in the Commonwealth of Dominica. As someone who has consistently, since the passage of Hurricane Maria, called for unity of purpose, called for inclusion, called for joining hands and joining hearts in the cause of the rebuilding of Dominica. There were times when that call was misunderstood, misrepresented. And that is why I am pleased today to be here at this consultation in the hope and with the prayer that it is in fact a new beginning it in fact represents a new beginning along the lines of the unity of purpose, along the lines of the joining hearts and joining hands, and doing this together for our Commonwealth of Dominica. Linton further noted that he welcomes the comments from the Prime Minister who said that making Dominica a climate resilient country is not going to be achieved by the government working alone. It's going to take all of us working smart and working hard. Meantime, the leader of the opposition further explained that the resilient climate challenge is nothing new to Dominica. He referred to the Prime Minister previously underlining that statement. But the Prime Minister tells us as a result of the inadequacy of financial support from the world community, we did not go as far as we could have gone. That I suggest to you is a matter for serious debate. We have been pursuing a low carbon climate resilient development strategy since 2012 with support from climate finance donors and development corporation partners. This consultation deserves to hear how much money exactly did we collect or attract into Dominica under the banner of that low carbon climate resilient development strategy and what exactly did we accomplish. He explained that a climate resilient country simply means a country capable of getting back into shape if ever and whenever it is affected by the destructive forces of our change in climate. And also in the news, the government of Dominica through the Ministry of Health and Environment under the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project DVRP has contracted a Canadian company, Marlini Consulting Services, to undertake a light detection and ranging survey for Dominica. The Canadian company was contracted on May 3rd of 2017. Project coordinator for the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project, Colin Gist, said the purpose of the project is to assert the government of Dominica with improving disaster and climate resilience 
through various activities including rehabilitation of infrastructure, development of tools and modeling systems to support engineering, civil works and coastal and hydrological analysis. The data that's going to be produced, will, uh, that's going to be derived from the LIDAR, will help support um, what we call the development of hydrological models to analyze watershed, drainage flow, drainage control, land stabilization, and also uh, it will also help identify areas that are vulnerable to landslides. And, um, and all this information is very critical for physical planning and the future planning and, um, as we go along, in the, especially post-Hurricane um, Maria. Guest informed that this survey is expected to run until the 9th of March 2018. He also informed that the general public should, not ex should expect sorry, a low-lying aircraft traversing the skies. The public should uh, take note that it's only for uh, uh, survey purposes and nothing else. And um, there should be no reason why there should be a concern or scared about. Um, as a matter of fact, there has been a public awareness, um, public service uh, announcement that has been aired for the past week and will continue this process to inform the public um, of what's happening. The project coordinator informed that the aircraft conducting the survey is based at the Douglas Charles Airport in Marigot. Gist also informed of minor atmospheric challenges that the aircraft faces in conducting the survey. He said low cloud level and high gust winds may delay the survey. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, LIDAR, which stands for Light Detection and Ranging, is a remote sensing method that uses light in the form of pulsed laser to measure ranges variable distances to the earth. These light pulses combined with all the data recorded by the airborne system generate precise three-dimensional information about the shape of the earth and its surface characteristics. And the Dominica Fire and Ambulance Services have indicated that it responded to over 8,000 ambulance calls for the year 2017. Substation Officer of the Dominica Fire and Ambulance Service and Public Relations Officer Wayne Leta informed that quite a bit of work was done for the past year. He also noted that the Fire and Ambulance Department saw an increase in most of its activities compared to that of 2016. We actually responded to 8,812 ambulance calls and the ambulance calls derive from the various stations around the island and one of the things we have to take take note of in 2017 is that for a period of time the Lapland district because we have eight ambulance stations around the country and we operate eight ambulances but the Lapland district was dormant for a while and the Casabros district covered the Lapland district for a period of the year. But we still had an increase in the amount of ambulance calls during the year 2017, and we up to 8,812. And that actually is an increase from 2016, where we had 8,672. Later also noted that there were a total of 234 fire calls for 2017, which showed an increase by 66 calls from 2016. The, during, during the year, the, the category of fire call which we actually dominated was that of bushfires. We had approximately 128 bushfires for the year. And as we are on this particular category of fire, one of the things we also recognized is that post-Hurricane Maria, which would mean from September to December, we saw a large increase in the amount of bushfires during that time. And as a matter of fact, it would be the first year that the fire department would have, reco that would have reco recorded so many bushfires during that period of the year. Normally, our bulk of bushfires are during the dry period which would have been from March until May. But the bulk of bushfires that we responded to during post-Maria was actually more 
or double than what we we had a dominico fire and ambulance service also responded to 43 house fires and 21 vehicle fires for 2017 42 other fires which includes fire involved in electrical appliances or dominant electrical pools were also responded to in 2017 and that takes us to the end of today's primetime news package. On behalf of the entire CN4 team, I am Alan Christopher saying thank you for watching.